This episode of What the Tech is brought to you by Casper, an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the price because everyone deserves a great night's sleep. Get $50 off any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash Andrew and enter promo code Andrew at checkout. Welcome to What the Tech. I'm Andrew Zarin. Of course, I'm joined by the one, the only, Mr. Paul Therod. How you doing, Paul? Less good now, <laughs> but not too bad, I guess. Were you pretty good about 30 seconds ago? Yeah. How were you? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> it's one of those, one of those yeah. days. Uh, I have so much to talk to you about. I have a lot of questions for you, actually. Uh, you mm-hmm. know what I didn't ask you this year? What, what's your New Year's resolution? I mean, I, well, um, we're, a, we're a month off, but I, I, I always ask you every year and I didn't ask you this year. Yeah. Um, I, I, <laughs> it's, it's funny. You're ruining an article, Andrew. Um, <laughs> so but, sorry. Uh, cause I'll probably be writing about this tomorrow. Is it a but... premium article? Because then I'm taking away the big bucks. Yeah, no, it's okay. Um, uh, so, uh, as part of my diet change last year, um, for a long time, I wasn't eating breakfast. And then mm-hmm. mid year ish, between a lot of travel, which kind of screws this up, and the move, which really screwed it up, um, I started eating breakfast again. So mm-hmm. sometime late last year, I don't remember, December, I don't remember when it was, it doesn't matter. Um, I kind of went back to that schedule because obviously, if you can skip a meal, you save it on calories. Yeah, save it on calories. Um, <clears throat> anyway, this is intermittent fasting, but the. Um, how do I say this? I'm sorry. I'm just dragging this out. The, the, I'm so I'm so sidetracked by what just happened at work. I I can't even think straight. So, um, the short version is that when you consider a low carb diet, um, like any diet, it works and then it stops working. And the reason every diet stops working is that your body adjusts to whatever you're doing. Yeah. And then it, you know, because that's the way we're designed. It's like a feast or famine thing, and um, it adjusts to the lower calorie and carb intake that you're doing, and it it you know, and you start to gain weight again. So the way you fix that is with intermittent fasting. Um, skipping breakfast is maybe the lowest form of that. Like you skip a meal, um, for the past, I don't know, 10 days, two weeks, I have been, uh, skipping two meals. Mm. Um, I I don't do it every single day because the truth is it's hard to do. And although it's supposed to get easier over time, I'm not sure I've experienced that. Are you you a stress eater? No, I I am am a, well, okay, but <laughs> I, I'm not. <laughs> and I'm under a no, lot. I mean, of maybe I am. I don't know. But no, I, I mean, I think most people. You know, we live in a in a time of plenty, so food is available everywhere. We have this mistaken belief that uh, eating small amounts of foods all day long is like really healthy, when in fact that's the exact opposite of what you should do. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I eat a lot at night. Like we snack at night. Like I'll you know normal day you could eat three meals, um. And then you sit down and watch TV and you drink wine and you eat a snack. And sure. there's a lot of unnecessarily uh, unnecessary food there. So anyway, my my New Year's resolution is to figure out this fasting thing. Because uh, there are people who like fast for weeks or even I months did. at a time. Um, All three years. I did it consistently for three years. I did intermittent fasting and yeah. it works. But what I would do is it's, um, I, it's very hard. But you kind of adjust. So I would yeah. – have a very small breakfast and I would not have a lunch and I would have a very small dinner and I would do like very, I'm I'm just saying like a a piece of chicken, you know, even even down to like some days I would boil chicken and get all the sodium out and just to, you know, detox that way. (laughs) I got very obsessive with this, with the working out and everything. But what I would do for two days, Paul, I would eat anything and everything. Nothing was off limits. And that was enough to keep my system from, you know, kind of plateauing right, right now i don't i'm not a doctor i don't recommend it actually this was recommended to me by my friend uh he's a doctor uh orlando gonzalez he's a life modification doctor and he's the one that kind of brought this onto me and i p- drop weight tremendously on this but you know when you fall out of this when you fall out of it you fall out of it so your resolution is to be committed not to this. fall out of not it. fall out of it <laughs> mine yeah 
and this kind of goes into what we're we're going to be doing um uh, minus a, i have all these ideas and mm. a lot of them are pretty decent but i never commit to them i yeah. i have all these ideas and when it comes to executing i never do so my resolution is to execute these ideas i mean life is um time consuming <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, tell me about it and busy and tell me uh, about it. yeah things get in the way i have all kinds of intentions um Anyway, if you're a, yeah. if you are a premium customer, I'll be writing about yeah, passes. Yeah, I, I, I can't wait to hear about it. Um, we do have a lot to talk about. I want to talk about uh, Apple and the iOS issues and uh, their their path in 2018 because okay. they are they're kind of veering off a little bit and they're changing direction. I guess it's Apple going with the going with the the punches, right? Rolling with the punches. <laughs> Is that what they're rolling doing? Rolling with the punches. Rolling. That sounds like a uh, Ario Speedwagon song. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I want to talk about that, obviously, and there's a there's a whole lot more to get to. But Paul, um, I want to. Can you you want to plug Thorop Premium a little bit because we haven't spoken about it in a while, and I know you guys are really working hard over there, and you guys are pumping out articles left and right. Good. Oh, not you... really. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate selling myself, Andrew. I want you to learn yeah. how to sell yourself. Right. I'll sell it for you. Guys, go to Therot Premium, therot.com. You can sign up for the premium service, and you guys are putting out a whole bunch of premium content like the live podcast. Uh, the live podcast is free for everybody, but the podcast, daily podcast you do with Brad. Also, all these great Therot Premium articles. You also have access to uh, the premium forum, the, new the newsletter, premium comments, enhanced user experience, and a whole lot more. And it's just uh, seven bucks a month, guys. You could go ahead and do that. I want to uh, just talk about it because I'm a Thorat Premium subscriber and I'm one of the first ones. I'm an original. I'm an OG. I'm an OGT. <laughs> you are the OGT. You, you know yeah. what you need? You, you need like Thorat Premium motorcycle jackets and yours just says OG on top and then it's just the T logo in the middle like the patch. <laughs> and then you could get jumped by real and a bikers. picture of Tom Brady. And Tom Brady. Uh, listen, if you guys want to cheat, you could cheat. It's okay. We all know. Wow. It's okay. Really? Really? I'm rooting for the Patriots because I want the Giants to be the only team that beat them in the last couple of years. Okay. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Oh, by the way, are you going to watch that 30 for 30 on Belichick? Um, they're doing a pretty good um, thing on it. I'm curious. Yeah, no, I, I saw Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see it. Right. Anyway, Paul, uh, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, there's been a ton of Apple issues, uh, especially with iOS. Yeah. And this, I, I mean, we've always discussed like Google having this beta mentality. And I mean, for years ago, I mean, I don't know how much of it is still part of what they do. But for years, you and I always said that Google has this beta mentality that all their customers are beta testers. And that's how yeah. Google, you know, with Gmail forever, it was a beta. And essentially everything that they've put out is at some level of beta. And it doesn't really work well when you've got people paying for the product. When, when it's a free service, People don't mind because it's exclu it, 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 it's well, exclusive. Well, they should mind, well, <laughs> but I see what you're saying. Yeah. There's more yeah. tolerance to it. Sure. And Google Glasses was a great example of a beta that didn't work as well. Uh, Android, to some extent, was like that. And uh, the list goes on and on, you know, a multitude of services that they put up. But they kind of got their act together and they kind of realized this is not the direction. On the other hand, Apple, which never had that mentality, uh, they would put out finished products and really decent products has fallen well, into this testing. Of... I'd like to take a slight exception to that okay. because I think it, no ahead. matter how far you are over on the Apple side of the fence, I think most people would agree over the past several releases of iOS that the first version of iOS, whatever, 7, 8, 9, whatever version, is woefully inadequate and is buggy and incomplete and that they release a 0 .01, a 0 .02, a 0 .1, a 0 .2, you know, they rev it. And you know, at some point, those uh, updates involve, you know, new features and things like that. But the initial version almost never comes out in a in a solid form. A solid I, form I, I, yeah. I do agree with you, however, that this situation has gotten much worse over the past, say, two releases of iOS and that they are now basically on par with. Well, what not just I, I, you know what I think it really um, I, I think with the MacBooks, that was the first time <laughs> sure. that I that I personally yeah. that I personally said, yeah. "Oof, you know, there's a lot yep. wrong here." And 
it's not uh, listen i got the 2017 model it's fine whatever it, it's overpriced it's not, but you know it's I don't, yeah it's, it's apple not. i mean but you know where here are the here are the things that affect me right that touch yeah. that this this track this this touchpad that they have on top it sucks it freezes uh the they got rid of the mag safe charger and now yeah, it's now it's thunderbolt 3 upset about and, that and on the 2016 model, you know what happens when you plug that thing in a couple too many times? The, the entire thing loosens up and falls out. This is a bad direction. And this was the first time I said, wow, you know what? They've kind of fallen. They're falling apart here as far mm. as a consistently high-end product. Because if you're entering at a certain price point, there's certain expectations. Everybody's guilty of this. But as, as someone that has been using it for a decade, I have to tell you, my experience, my, my overall experience is dropping. When it comes to quality control on the software end, however, this version of iOS has a lot of problems. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I honestly, here's how, you know, things are wrong. Um, you know, people like me who are outside a critic is a tough term. I don't mean like literally, I'm just like, I need jerk. Don't like anything Apple does. I actually like a lot of what Apple does, but let's say outside critics. I'm not in the Apple ecosystem. I'm not, uh, uh, I don't have an Apple blog. I'm not, you know, I don't just automatically assume everything they do is awesome. Uh, people like me have been critical of Apple over the years for various things. You can often point out that the things that they produce are very high priced, you know, that most people can't afford them. That's an easy criticism to make. It's almost always accurate. Um, and you could point out things that were missing or wrong or whatever it was in various products. But the thing that's changed over the last year and year plus is that Apple's fans are complaining now for the first time ever vocally, yes. right? Started, it uh, didn't start with, but one of the most vocal things was around that new MacBook Pro when those came out in late 2016. And Apple very quickly revved them uh, less than six months later with the version that you now have, um, which was, I, was unprecedented, I think, in the history of that uh, product line. Apple apologized uh, to Mac users for not having a MacBook Pro to offer them and, and offered them this iMac Pro as some kind of a, an interim kind of a thing. Um, Apple apologized about throttling performance yeah. uh, to improve battery life on they, the iPhone. They would have never done that. No. I mean, there's been a bunch of this stuff. And, um, you know, for me personally, like, I, I'm in a tough position because I have to write about technology and I can justify or excuse some purchases from time to time because I simply need to have the stuff around to be able to speak accurately about how it compares vis-a-vis -vis to whatever else. And so I've spent a lot of money on Apple products over the years and Google products and Microsoft products. And um, this past year for me personally, it's not just Apple, but it is notable because I wouldn't have done this in the past. I have never purchased so many things and just returned them as I did this past year. Now, is it because – in, in you know, because they it, just don't offer, they just do not have the value. Yeah. Even for someone like me who kind of needs to be on top of what's going on, they are just so pointlessly expensive for what you get with all the limitations and the craziness. It's not a decision I would have made in the past. Yeah. Um, because I don't think that their products were so off base. Because you kind of justify the now. expense with, you know, yeah. I got to cover this. So, yeah, it's expensive, but yep. I'm actually yep. making money by buying it because I'm able to discuss it and, you know. Spread right. my information. What you know? Yeah. We, listen, I, I, I think we are in. I, I think it's partially tech fatigue. I, I think that comes into play. I and. By the way, I, you're right, but I'm sorry to interrupt. But I, yeah. I think that you could look at tech fatigue from both directions, right? Tech fatigue on the part of users who are, you know, slammed year after year after year with like increasingly pointless upgrades, but also on the other end from the people that are making these devices from their need to do the same thing, right? Like how Google talked, spoke to this when they announced their terrible new products last October. You know, they said, look, all phones basically have the same specs. I mean, what, how are we going to improve on what's out there? Um, and they talked about various ways they plan to do so. I, I don't think it's borne any fruit at all, but whatever. They have their ideas. You know, Apple has its unique thing, obviously. But, you know, I mean, imagine you're at Apple or Google or wherever, and you have to come up with, well, how do we one-up the... Yeah. You know, the iPhone, whatever. Yeah. How do we, you know, I mean, it, it, we're getting to the point now where it's just, it's, it's almost pointless. So sometimes, you know, sometimes it's not about one upping. Like sometimes it's just about changing a feature just to change a feature. I mean, look at USB, yeah. right? I get, I get yeah. where we're headed, but Apple purposely removed USB. Yeah. 
uh, force and forcefully they remove USB. The same with the same with eliminating, you know, the, the headphone jack. The headphone yeah. jack. There is yep. no. I, I listen. How thick and how expensive is this thing to put it? They did it just to do it because now I, uh, it, it leads to other businesses. And I get headphone it. jack. One thing is is tough for me because when they did that, I, I of course the, the you know of course they. I think was it the headphone jack where they talked about courage. Is that, courage, was that yeah. The and then, jack? and by the way, that's the one that I, you know, kind of <laughs> on the red side. I gave them the, a pass. I gave know, them a pass. They, they uh, on the Republican side, they call swallowing the red pill, right? I see that after Trump's speech, okay. and I'm not getting political here, but they, no, said, no, you know, I, I saw but, it on my timeline. They said sw- people, people are swallowing the red pill. That was the moment that my eyes widened, and I said, "Oh my God, the balls of this company." That they use well, the term that, courage. That part didn't surprise me. That that's been consistent. Tim, but but Paul, they yeah, but here, used the term courage about the iPhone I know, I know, the I day the day I that know. they had a a a tribute to the shooting and the nightclub in Orlando. I know, I know, I know. It's uh, they're horrible. I, I the, the hardest thing about Apple products is the people who run the company who are so terrible in their fake humility and all. I, I it's it is the hubris thing is the worst. But. Apple's user base is what it is. And Apple is able to push technology in a way that other companies can't. And I really thought that they were going to be successful doing this. Now, to be fair to Apple, I will say this. If you get one of those stupid little lightning adapters and you plug in a pair of headphones. It works fine. It works fine. Yeah. Every single time. It really does. Yeah. That said, I have been in the past when I was using an iPhone, um, you know, you run into that instance. Thank God never on a plane. But where – you don't have the dongle and you, you can't play your music, right? So I've, that's happened. I've gotten in my wife's car, started driving away, and I'm like, great. You know, so, all right, so that's happened. No big, you know, what? I shouldn't say no big deal. Actually, you know what? That is a big deal, but it's not life-threatening. You know, it's, it's not, not a serious deal in the scope of other things. The thing is, since that, I have switched to the Google Pixel X, uh, Pixel 2 XL. It also does not have a headphone jack. You may recall a year ago when, Apple was bragging about courage. They were saying that, you know, they were touting the fact that they still had a headphone jack. Well, flash forward one year and now they don't. Google's adapter for that thing, which of course is USB-C to headphone, is the buggiest piece of crap on this planet. And it is made using this phone for media Definitely. almost completely unusable. Yeah. Almost, it's, it's hard to explain how terrible this works. And that thing right there is a a microcosm, a, 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 a sort of a not meta, but a, like a, a very specific example of, of how the Google slash Android ecosystem is so much worse than what's available from Apple. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, I cannot stress, I've almost written just about this one topic. It is the most horrible experience imaginable. It's so bad that when I fly now, I bring another device just to listen to media. Oh my God, that's I can't terrible. Stand, I can't stand dealing with it. Uh, Dan in our chat room says 3.5 millimeter forever. Yeah. <laughs> listen, it works. There's, There's no nothing reason. wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. And, you know, the argument on that side was, well, you know, that technology has been, be- is, has been used for 100 years. It's a 100-year-old technology. I go, yeah, so is electricity. <laughs> Nobody's talking about removing that. You know, well, copper wires in for right. electricity is, you know, listen, so I, look, either I, way, go, go Apple ahead. does things like they introduce wireless charging in, uh, you know, 28, 2017, like it's some, some kind of a new thing. It's, you know, something that we had several years ago in other phones. Um, uh, okay. You know, the notch thing I think is ridiculous, terrible design, hate it. Um, I think people who tell, who say things like you don't even notice it's there anymore or whatever are delusional. <laughs> Like yeah. this thing is crazy. It's wrong. It's just patently wrong. You know, you really you don't notice do... it when the phone is off. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. No, but I mean, it is literally a, a forced letterbox experience. For it's, no reason. It's the it's the yeah. worst. Yeah, literally for no reason. It's the worst. Um, I, jeez, uh, I it's it's we're in a strange area now, and uh, I've written about this for whatever it's worth. I. I I've written about Apple design and how I think it's falling apart. You know, we cited some of the examples we just talked about. Um, but this is, you know, this is their moment. I mean, you, you see some some signs of them opening up a little bit, right? Listening to customers, responding. Um, that Apple apology for the uh, the battery, I think we can all agree, was out of left field. It didn't seem like something they needed to even publically address. Uh, I'll tell you why. Class action lawsuit. That's why. 
Well, was there a class action? Lawsuit? Well, they're, they're fearing it. I mean, that that well, would. Well, be... no. By the way, but once you once you announce that, you've guaranteed class action lawsuits, and there are several. I'm sure there will be. Um, yeah. No, there are. Yeah. If this has already happened. This is there are many. You've got governments investigating them. Um, turns out, in in places like the EU, purposely deprecate or um, uh, destroying the performance of a product that you've given to consumers over time is That's illegal. illegal. That is illegal. Yep. <laughs> I mean, th there's. Yeah. They never should have admitted this. Well, the I, other, I don't understand and, it. And how far does this reach? It's not just iPhones. And I'm willing to bet it's not just iPhones. It's I'm willing to bet it's uh, so MacBooks. So they've said it's and, not. It, oh, I don't know about that. They they said iPads are not impacted by this. I, here's the thing. Then, then what? Then what made my iPad two? You know, or my I, iPad no, no, Air no, no, run no, like I, crap? Yeah, you're no, you're right. So um, before this whole debacle um, happened, the New York Times, Brian Chen, I'll never forget this. This idiot. Wrote, a, wrote an this article. before it happened. Yep. He said, uh, it said, uh, is your iPhone slowing down when a new version of iOS comes up? Nope. And he went through all the reasons why this conspiracy theory is fake. Now, anyone who's owned an iPhone, I don't care what version, knows that, yes, actually, when a new version of iOS comes out, your phone does slow down. It absolutely, every single time. This has always happened. Um now, there are a variety of reasons for slowing a phone slowing down over time. You know, you add apps to it and so forth, background processes, whatever. But um, we've all sort of suspected that Apple is optimizing these new iOS releases for the latest hardware, right? That there's a little bit of a um, subtle nudge to a new phone by making the performance worse. We've all sort of suspected that. It's insane that he wrote something like that. Is it? And Yes, because <laughs> he's wrong. And then Apple comes out and says, hey, actually, yeah, we are slowing down your iPhone. I mean, I've had then this... the New York Times had to do a follow-up article where they explained why what he wrote originally was still right <laughs> and yet was completely contradicted by what Apple was doing. You know what? He was right. He was still using iOS 7. <laughs> and okay. at that point, <laughs> I don't – uh, I'm sorry, but yeah. this was just – it was the, the timing on this was beautiful. And uh, the, thing that Apple, the thing that Apple is doing, which I, I think is purposeful – is saying, well, we didn't really start doing this until you know iPhone six or whatever it was, and um, it's like, yeah, no, that's not true. But but imagine this scenario, right? Because I don't think people complaining about phones slowing down was any worse two months ago than it was fifteen months ago or two years it's ago. It's been the same, same. It's been same, the same. same that's argument. what I think. Yep. That's what I think. Yep. Listen, now, and some of it, and some of it is. The nature of software and hardware and the way that it works, you know, the more you use something, the more it gets filled in with nonsense and the more it slows down. I get it. That's part of it. But, you know, this is okay. okay but, this is purposely but, done. No, no, I get it. I'm just saying, why on earth would would they admit to this? In other words, imagine this scenario. It's um, February 2018 and iOS 10.0 three comes out or whatever it is. And there's some list of features. And among those features are we've added a, um, a new control to settings that will let you determine what happens when your battery starts dying. Do we factor in performance or, you know, battery life first? They, people would have been like, I don't think anyone would have seen that and said, Oh, see, that proves my conspiracy theory. I think people would have been like, Hey, that's cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, like, like you don't even have to address it. Just do it. Why yeah. on earth would they have come out publicly and said anything about this? No one would have questioned this. Yeah, that is interesting. Why they would do it? Very strange. What? What is? Do you have a theory? Do you have a? a... No, <laughs> I I can't explain it because yeah. the 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 one thing I've seen under Tim Cook is a very it's very slow moving and it's not it's not like in giant leaps and bounds, but. He has been opening up the company and its products. Yeah, a little bit more transparency. And has, yeah. Yes. And, and look, it's not hard. I mean, Steve Jobs was like Stalin in this capacity. But um, but he's done it in little drips and drabs. And, uh, you know, it, small things like iOS, whatever version, added the support for third-party keyboards. Like, wow. I mean, that's kind of a weird lifting of the kimono. You would think Apple would never compromise the quality of their iPhone by letting you switch out the keyboard. Yeah. But they did it. They did it finally. I, I, I mean, years and years. Yeah. Oh, no, I know. It took them forever. But I mean, I, I give them credit for that kind of thing. So why would Tim Cook, why would he, why, first of all, all the apologizing. I think they can't stop apologizing. I think they're in a, they're caught in this serial loop where they feel the need to, for the first time ever, 
justify themselves, you know? Yeah. And, and, and Steve Jobs' mentality was never justify yourself. Let let them work around you. Well, by uh, the Steve way. Steve Jobs, not Steve Jobs. Yeah, Steve cons- Jobs. Oh, Jesus, I'm losing consider my mind. This, yeah, consider these two things. They make a phone that can't make phone calls when you're holding it. Think about how serious that is. And say right? it's your phone. No, think about how serious that is. Yeah. They have an event where the guy comes out and says, other phones do this too. If you want a free bumper, here you go. Go f- yourself. Yeah. That was their response to that. Now we've got the situation where batteries do die over time. They just do. It's nothing Apple can prevent. That's what happens. And their response to it is to do what Apple always does, to make a decision. We're going to adjust the performance in certain cases to preserve the battery life because we think that provides you with a better customer experience. That's so much more explainable than our phone can't make phone calls. You know, but they I, apologize for the second one. Here's a theory on this. Um, is, is it that the market has become so competitive? You know, at that point when Apple said, you're holding this thing wrong, F you, we're not, we don't give a crap, here's a freaking bumper. At that point, Apple was still ahead of the game. They were in their, their, their peak. You know, they had the iPad. Nobody was doing an iPad, a tablet like an iPad. Nobody was doing – I mean, you had Android tablet, phones and tablets, but really it wasn't – the ecosystem had been built. Now it's such a competitive market where you have other options and one screw up and one good marketing plan from Samsung or Google, you know, you may shift that number a little bit. Maybe you that's the maybe but, that's the feeling right now. It's just survival in the market where you have to make everybody happy. That's why they the have thing. 15,000 phones now. This is the same phone, <laughs> three generations uh, well, still out there. Okay, but they, they don't have 15,000 new phones. They have, <laughs> you know. All phones, iPhone 7, iPhone 6, <laughs> iPhone 8, no, X, I, iPhone X. So I don't know because the thing that flies contrary to that is they just came up with the iPhone 10. The iPhone 10 is a much bigger problem for Apple than this battery thing, right? Because at the end of the day, the battery thing is not their fault, not really, because batteries do go down, Yeah, you know? And listen, one of the reasons that people choose Apple products is so they don't have to deal with a bunch of stupid switches where they have no idea what it means and they could harm themselves by choosing the wrong thing. You know, they they trust Apple to make the right decisions for them. It's very possible that what Apple did was the right decision for most of their customers, right? I mean, apologizing for this again, I think is insane. I don't know why. I don't know why. they. I, I see no reason for them to have responded the way they did. But on the other side of this coin... They did explicitly design the iPhone 10. And my God, what were they thinking? Yeah. What were they thinking? Yeah. Which That's I want to get I want to get to that. I want to get to that. Uh, it's crazy. Yeah. This is this is actually I, I've been wanting to have this discussion with you for some time now. Yeah. Um and it, it's um it's an interesting discussion to have because right now we're in a very I, I think 2018 is gonna be a very interesting year when it comes to technology and the way that we use technology and the shift, the pivotal shift when it comes to how these companies are marketing things. It's a very competitive market and a lot of changes. I want to get to that. But before we do, I want to take a moment. These are not. There we go. And I want to talk about Casper. Go to Casper.com slash Andrew. You can enter the promo code Andrew. Check out. Get $50 off. $50 towards your mattress purchase. Now, we were talking about design and good design. Well, this is the great thing about Casper. It's made. Casper mattresses are designed by humans for humans. The original Casper mattress combined a multiple supportive uh, memory foam for a quality sleep surface that just gave you the right thing. I've told the story a thousand times, and I'll tell it again. This mattress changed me because <laughs> I it really did. I was Sorry. miserable. I got four. It did. It changed me for the for the good. Maybe sometimes for the bad. Um, I have a terrible back. I need to get surgery now. This is not medical advice at all. This is just my personal experience. And I had spent thousands. I mean, when I tell you, I spent maybe a couple grand on a mattress that was supposed to be for my back. And it was absolutely terrible, and I was miserable, and every day I was in pain to the point that my wife was – she had to stand on my, on my toes, and I would have to straighten my back out on the floor every morning because my back was so bad. And it was terrible. I started dieting, and I started losing weight. It was still better, but it was not great. I got a Casper mattress, and within a month or two, I started feeling different. It just has that support. It has, it's, it's, I like the firmness. I like the softness. It's actually perfect for me. And they have a great offer. You get a hundred night guarantee. You get a hundred nights to sleep on this. Hundred day trial. Let me just say that it's a hundred day risk free trial. You can sleep on this thing, and if it is not for you, guess what? You can send it right back. That's the best part of this. You're not 
stuck once you buy the mattress. If it's not for you, you can send it back. These guys are unbelievable. It's made here in the U.S. Uh, it, it's I've been talking about them for a while, and it's super easy to order. You could go online, go to casper.com slash Andrew. You could enter the promo code Andrew, and you get $50 towards your mattress purchase. They also have a multitude of, of products now. It's it's They have three different mattresses. They got a dog bed. They got duvet coverage. They got pillows. They got pillowcases. I mean, it's they've really grown tremendously, and it's because of the quality of their product. I stand by their products. I always talk about it. It's to the point that at work, they every meeting, I do a Casper live read. It's like a joke now. Three guys have my job have bought a Casper mattress. Uh, and also, I run a little hot, and these mattresses are designed to, to breathe, and it keeps you cool and regulated throughout the night, which is awesome. Casper.com slash Andrew. Get $50 off your mattress purchase by going to Casper.com slash Andrew and entering the code Andrew at checkout. I want to thank them for supporting What the Tuck. Um, let's see where to begin. You know, I, we were talking about how it's almost like this reality has hit, um, yeah. Apple and Apple Mac users. And I was reading an article, uh, the other day, and this is something to think about. Okay. How many years ago was Snow Leopard? <laughs> right. Think about this. Yeah. I don't know. I, that many. was really the last stable version of Mac OS. Um, stable. That was the last one that was just solid. And so I don't, I mean, I don't use Mac OS so every I, day. I do. I, I, yeah, I, no, I, mean, I know you do. But I mean, you're, that was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. What is, was, what is stable? What does that mean? It just, like, it just was, it, it wasn't like I have a tremendous amount of problems on this, like software wise. And I never did yeah. on, I, I never did on Mac OS. I, I always, I, you know, even when people complain, I never had these problems and I, you know, this is a time that when Windows 8 was happening, you know, I had Windows 7, but I always thought, in my opinion, I liked Mac OS better than Windows 7 to some extent. And when Windows 8 happened, I loved Mac OS. <laughs> sure. Or OS, OS 10 <laughs> at the time. Sure, Windows 8 did a lot for it, Mac sales. It did a lot for me. I'm sure it did. And But it's been a gradual decline. And every now and then they come back and they fix stuff. But Line was a disaster after Snow Leopard. And right. it's just been buggy. I, I have like I have a I have a weird issue. I um so, like this is hmm. something new now. I lose right. volume on like if I'm playing music, all of a sudden it'll just die. There's no sound. And even though the bar is going, I get no sound. I gotta restart the computer and it comes back. Or this touch bar freezes. Or right. this this haptic touch uh you know, they have that weird uh click now on these trackpads. It just stops mm -hmm. working. Doesn't click anymore. Hmm. It was 2009, by the way. No, Snow Leopard was not 2009. 2010, I, I, maybe. I, was no it way 2009? I would Get out of If that's true, that's put crazy. That in my head. That's crazy if it is. So there's a lot. 2012, I think. No, it was 2009. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot that has happened. And I, maybe it's that they, everybody's so competitive now where you have to release feature, release feature, release feature. And it goes back to my, my comment about beta mentality. So now Apple's in this weird predicament, right? With this version of iOS. Have you experienced these bugs that people are really upset about? Me? Yeah. No. You have not experienced those problems with iOS? Mm -mm. I have to tell you, it's not all that great. <laughs> well, I, I will say this. I, I've heard from so many people about them that I can't deny them. Um, but I mean, I don't, so I don't use an iPhone every day anymore, right? I'm using an Android phone, but I do use an iPad pro every day, uh, to read the news and to read other things. And, um, you know, when I'm on trips, I use it to watch movies and all that kind of stuff. So no, I've never experienced any of this stuff. I, mm. I think if I was on an iPhone every day, staring at an iPhone, uh, that might be a different situation. As I described earlier, I have a, what I'd call a hate, hate relationship with my Google phone right now. And I probably would hate iOS just as much if I had, if I had to use iOS 11, whatever we're on now, what are we on now? 11, two or whatever it is. Um, five is two five coming out. Yeah. Something. I don't know. Yeah. So now, we'll get it right. Eventually, Andrew. Yeah. Well, <laughs> iOS 12, gonna, iOS 12 know? was going to be, it was going to be a, I guess yeah. a design re, re, you know, it was going to be a redesign, mm -hmm. which by the way, might have addressed the number one complaint that everyone has about iOS. The fact that you can't organize the start screen, how you want it to look. Like you can't put icons anywhere. They have to fill in from the upper left, et cetera. 
Um, they might have been looking at fixing that. Um, now, that said, what Apple is supposedly doing, which is stepping back and saying, okay, we'll add a few new features, obviously, but we want to get the fit and finish right on this version and get back on track. I actually kind of applaud that. I mean, within the context that they, this is a problem they created themselves, of course, but this is something I've been asking Microsoft to do with Windows 10 for years and uh, for, with Windows in general, I guess. Um, and if it's true that they're doing this, and I hope it is, um, I I think this is an incredibly positive development. It's, that's very mature and smart. Yeah, no, I, I 100% I think this. So the other interesting thing here, um, and this was in the uh, the article on therot.com, and that they're going to stick to their plan of their universal app platform for iOS and macOS. Yeah, um, I feel like that's inevitable. If you look at um, where all the app development is, it's mobile and web. It's not on legacy platforms like Mac or Windows. And all of the other major platform vendors, which in this case are Microsoft and Google, have worked on these hybrid platforms where they've integrated a mobile app platform into the, into a legacy you know desktop system, yeah. right? Chrome OS with Android apps and Windows 10 with the uh, Microsoft Store and those apps. Um, Apple has the best mobile ecosystem on earth. Still, yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, and it would only benefit Mac users. You know, the, and we know that Apple started a Mac App Store years and years ago. It's gone nowhere. There's no, there's nothing super exciting going on over there. Um, this is a good solution. You know, it's smart. Yeah. So uh, this this kind of leads into a different discussion here because when you talk about a unified platform, you know, let, let's look at let's look at Windows, right? Yeah. Um, m when they were doing you know this universal platform for Windows, Windows was touchscreen. They had support for touchscreen. Mm -hmm. Does this mean that Apple's going to kind of Go well, back on what they had for a long time said that nobody wants to touch their screen. So I bet they actually do get there. Um, but what they have in the meantime is uh, great support for multi-touch gestures on the trackpad. And um, I know from, you know, using Android apps on uh, Chromebook that do not have touch screens that that actually works pretty damn well. And what it requires is for the platform maker, in this case, Apple, to build support into their system to translate, you know, mouse clicks and things into button presses and so forth. So obviously there are going to be situations, there'll be certain kinds of apps. And look what amazing. I got. And look what I got right there. <laughs> that is you know what? I kind of want to leave that on the whole show. <laughs> it's like uh, oh, a rock baby. You know what? This is this um, is this is them haunting you. <laughs> Remind funny. me tonight. I don't want to be reminded. It almost looks like I put a lower third up. Yeah, it does. It's that's amazing. Um, that is actually <laughs> hysterical. <laughs> there, there are going to be certain classes of apps um, that and don't work correctly on that system, right? If they don't add touch, but what is? But what's the point, right? In other words, why are they doing this? Um, there is a rich library of apps and games, I guess, on iOS that are not available on the Mac, and um, I think this is just to get people over the hump. You know, there's a couple of things. It's like, wow, I really like this calendar app or whatever it is, it's only available on iOS. Yeah. Love to use that on my desktop. Um, I think that's kind of solutions. Even even if it's limited to non-touch, I think it's going to be okay. Yeah, I, I think this is a very good step for them. And, you know, at the end, does this, does this make the current user base happy or does this actually bring people to the Mac OS platform? Right. That's a good question. I don't know. I mean, uh, Apple has the data on that. They know that there is a sizable number of people who use an iPhone but go home and use a Windows PC or a Chromebook or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe this is what gets them over the top. I mean, people in the Apple ecosystem especially, but everyone should enjoy this, really likes that integration thing and uh, the cohesive nature of it. And, you know, I you could almost picture... Apple even getting rid of their built-in mail calendar, whatever apps, and just using the versions from iOS, you mm -hmm. know? Um, there is, there's an interesting thing that can happen here because, look, you know, Apple uh, voices a lot of support for the Mac, but the truth is they really don't do much there. No, right? they don't. And if they could leverage the investments they've been making in iOS over the years in a better way on the Mac, it would make that system more valuable to the people who there, do use it. There definitely is a identity separation between the two platforms. 
And it wasn't yeah. as much early on, but now you're starting to see a direct separation between the two because, you know, the cohesiveness amongst their, the two UIs, yeah, it kind of looks similar, but not well, really. It, uh, yeah, some apps, not really. It's, it's, it's funny because over time they did add iOS user experiences to macOS. Um, a lot, not a lot of them necessarily worked very well, and they kind of Mac OS, Mac OS eyes them in some cases, like the notification center or whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, I I think the same thing on Windows. I look at some of these mobile apps, and you know, if you look at the way Mail works on an iPad um, or the calendar or whatever, like those those would be excellent on a desktop. You know, I don't know. Let me see. I, I you know, I use the Mac uh, Mail. app. You got to look at it on a big screen, though. It's not you can't you can't. Imagine like a little phone UI hanging oh, there in a window, well, although see. that would Let's look on the iPad. Well. I'm going to compare the two now. Okay. I mean, it's actually pretty similar. Eh, nah. You know what? You're absolutely right. They could make this. I just think the, yeah, the Mac uh, Mail app, for example, just to use the obvious example, uh, to me looks a little old-fashioned. It does look a little old-fashioned. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, the concept yeah. is still the same, but they haven't updated any graphic. They haven't updated the, yeah. the overall look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, that, and that's interesting. You know, it, it's those little things. Even FaceTime. FaceTime seems ancient on this thing. That's an yes. app that really... Yeah, sure. Remember FaceTime? Well, the Contacts Windows app is so, still so goofy looking. And... Uh, the calendar, the Contacts app. Uh... I don't know. It's just an idea. I don't know what they're going to do, but it seems like it makes sense. Yeah, this is a very interesting discussion to have because, uh, you know, we're in this weird transition period when it comes to technology and what we use and how we use it paul last night i spent 20 minutes editing videos on my phone and, <laughs> oh, I, and I i'm telling That's you great. and it was so easy and i didn't have to do it on on my computer and i just did it in bed and yeah. i'm thinking oh my god even me even i'm now jumping over and going into this mobile platform where i'm editing stuff and i thought to myself you know what this could be a lot easier i was using um adobe spark have mm -hmm. you used that? No. It's actually pretty cool for social media stuff. You could edit and you could, it does a lot of cool stuff. It's very easy, very simple. So there is Adobe Spark. Uh, there's a web based version for, mm -hmm. the, for PCs and laptops and Macs. Um, pain in the butt. <laughs> um, it's, yep. And so on, I was like, oh, you know what? This would be great on my iPad. I put it on the iPad today and I was like, boom, 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 boom. I'm just, I'm doing two things at once. I'm becoming, mm -hmm. I'm like one of the young kids now. That's what's happening. You know, I, um, as you were saying that, it occurred to me that Apple's entertainment experiences, like the TV app, uh, Apple Music, um, are not available on Mac OS. And you're, right. you're still stuck with this kind of legacy iTunes thing, which everyone, I think, agrees is a piece of crap. I mean, and just iTunes bringing, is ancient too now. Yeah. Yeah. Just bring that stuff to the Mac. Uh, that would be a huge benefit for people in that ecosystem. You know what's you interesting? Know? I was thinking about this. Um, Spotify is really, do you, I mean, do you use Spotify or do you use other platforms? I use, I do have Spotify and I pay for it because my family gets it, but I primarily use Google Play Music, but okay. I bring up Spotify. Yeah. From time so to time. I, I, I was, thank you. I'm getting alerts. <laughs> <laughs> every, every time I say something nice, it, 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 it beeps at me. Um, <laughs> I, I was not a Spotify user. I used my iTunes. I liked having my data. I liked having the, the files on hand. I would find what I wanted. I had it organized. And then I started mm -hmm. using Spotify, and I said, oh, my God, what am I doing? I'm nuts. Why would I use this piece of crap application? Right. It, it's, it's convoluted. Their, music, their, they, their streaming music sucks. And Spotify, and Spotify compiles you know, top 50 or top 25 of them, uh, depending on the genre. And it's it's mm -hmm. way more uh, cohesive. On, on every platform that they're on. So I stopped using iTunes. I canceled my Apple my Apple Music. I canceled Apple uh, the, the iTunes Match. And now I just right. use Spotify. Yep. I, this is a problem for them, you know? They were the innovators of this. Sure. You know, it, I it's, agree. A, it's interesting. Um, YouTube is mm -hmm. now, YouTube TV is coming to Apple TV very soon. Within yeah. the next week or so, I think. I hope so. Uh, Roku we'll announced support right now. Roku uh, is supporting Apple TV on all its Roku players and Roku TVs today. Oh, today? Today. Good. Uh, so that is a positive. I'm curious how it's going to be on my dad's TV because my father has uh, Roku built into his TV. So I'm going to test mm -hmm. that out today. But right. I have Apple TV in my living room, and I absolutely hate it. It's super buggy still. 
And I have Android. T- I have a uh, Android TV, Fire TV in my bedroom. Yep. It doesn't look like it's going to be on Fire TV anytime soon because of the dispute they're having. Oh, right. And so now I'm stuck with, you know, I have Hulu TV also. So I watch stuff on Hulu. But this may, you know, this is interesting. And I'm curious what kind of impact this is going to have. Because almost everyone that I know has some sort of Fire Stick or yeah, Apple TV. They have one of those things. Yep. Or, or a Roku. And for 40 bucks a month, if you could get everything you want built in. Yeah. To the YouTube, problem is you, you can't. Well, <laughs> Not yet. You, it's getting there. Well, it's getting. honestly, I have everything on Hulu TV that I really need. Right. I got all the local yeah. channels. I got the cable channels. I'm paying 34 bucks a month. Yep. Do I need, and I have it on multiple TVs. So instead of paying, you know, the $140, obviously I don't have HBO Showtime, whatever, because I opted not to have it. But is it, is the math worth it? Like, does it make sense when you add this service and add that service? Does it match up? uh, Cable TV is terrible, but it's still better than any of these things. So you you have cable right now, right? Yeah, it's still better. And by better, I don't, I mean, better is a tough word. It, it offers more channels. I found the channel lineup on YouTube to be very limiting and um, it didn't have a bunch of the stuff that we wanted. And, you know, cable TV works out to be like five bucks more a month uh, for what we're getting, but it has easily a hundred more channels. Easily. Yeah. I like the fact that YouTube TV does 1080p. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I like that. Um, yeah. It's, it, I think it's the best of what's out there right now. I mean, um, and it, it's something I'm going to keep looking at. Um, but yeah, we, we, and, and by the way, I curse that cable box almost every day. Every day. Yeah. Almost every day. Yeah. I, I, I hate it. I do hate it, but I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of like the path of least resistance. I, there, there is a big problem coming. I, I, I sort of, I, I constructed this joke in my head that I was going to put on Twitter and I, I couldn't get it down to anything succinct. But I was kind of saying, you know, the problem with these um, services is that you you find yourself using multiple services and then adding on kind of packages to some of the services. So, for example, you could add like HBO to Hulu or you could add it to I think you could add it to YouTube. You could add Showtime. You could add whatever it is. And and I was like, you know what they need is like this online service where you have like a basic package and then you can pay for premium channels. And then you can pay for, you know, cable uh, things like HBO. And it's like, oh, right, that's called cable TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, at some point, like, I I think it sounds attractive to people. Like, only pay for what you're going to really use, right? Like, one of the irritants of cable is you can click around on the guide. And you'll see, like, oh, there's an interesting show there I want to watch. And you click on it. And then there's, like, a pause. And then this message comes up and it says, hey, uh, you don't actually pay for this channel. If that's an error, click here and we can... You know, blah, 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 whatever. And like, I, I, I want to see only what I pay for, what you, pay for? <laughs> you know, yeah. for true is true. I also don't but, want any SD channels. Yeah. By the way, absolutely. I don't understand why there isn't a switch in my cable to turn that stuff off. I hate that too, but I just don't want to ever um, see it. Like I don't, I don't want no, to ever. And, and people don't understand it. Like I've come in, my daughter's been watching TV and it's like, you know, that if you add a thousand to the channel number, you're going to see this in HD, right? And she, she has no idea. But why you know what's amazing? Why? Why do they? I, I get why, I but know. why? If you have an HP, you know, right? Why, why can't, can't I turn say, it off? You know what, man? Save me the five bucks, and for, well, you know so, what? I'll so, pay you way, five some, dollars more. No, no, I don't want not, it. It's, you're not going to save any money. <laughs> yeah. The the my parents' uh, cable box, uh, whatever system they're on. I don't know if it's Verizon or whatever they're on, but. Um, if you actually go to an SD channel, you can configure the box so that it automatically, automatically loops you back goes, to the HD. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's I that's not a bad system. No, it's not. It's not terrible when it's like that. But you know, we're in a very different position right now. Yep. Where we have options when it comes to live television. No, I know. But the the thing is, you know, it, it requires so much work to figure out what you really need, right? Um, depending on the time of year, you might miss something, right? Because certain shows like that you might like to watch, like um, Homeland on Showtime or Game of Thrones on HBO or The Walking Dead on AMC or I'm trying to think of stuff like The Americans. I don't know what channel that's on, FX, FX or something. Yeah. Um, are not on right now, right? So you can kind of go through your little channel listing and you're like, uh, okay, blah, blah, blah. I need this stuff. I need this. Okay, fine. And then you compare it to say like YouTube TV and you're like, yeah, yeah, there we go. 
And then what you don't realize maybe is that it doesn't have some of that stuff. <laughs> like you don't realize it till it, you know, you might re open a newspaper, not that anyone opens a newspaper, open a website and be like, oh, they're in, they're reviewing Homeland season, whatever, episode three. I didn't even know that was on, you know. And I, the thing with cable TV is like it's terrible, but you're not going to miss out on stuff, you know. Or if you do, it's willful ignorance, I guess. I but you know, I know it's it's we're going to get there. We definitely are going to get there. Here, here's a here's a phenomenal article. The iPhone 10 is Apple's underrated masterpiece. That is a who, headline that I just who, saw. Who wrote? Who do you think? What? 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 Okay, let's play this game. Who? What? What? Website wrote this. The iPhone 10 is an uh, Apple's underrated masterpiece. Apple shows genuine underrated. Courage. Wait, do you wait, think wait. That this wait. is a phone that's been ignored. Okay, wait a minute. This it gets even better. Apple showed genuine courage in going for such a radical design, and users are loving it so far. You understand they've already warned that this thing isn't selling as much as they thought, and they've cut their production for the next quarter, right? You know that that happened. This is The Verge. Well, I was going to say it could only be The Verge or some gross Apple blog that only publishes bile like that. That's pathetic. Yeah, you know, this is this is the problem. This is That's, it is absolutely the this problem. This is uh, uh, courage. They I, actually use courage non-ironically in a story about Apple. Th this is a and like this, seriously. Oh boy. Okay, Here, here's the problem with this. You can't <laughs> always root. I mean, it's not a team's thing. It's not <sighs> like why are so many people so committed to to a brand and to a device? You know what? Over I, their own best interest. Over their best yes. interest. This guy yes. is a journalist. I'm gonna. Is he? <laughs> I'm I gonna guess. pretend. Listen, I'm not even. That gonna... This perfect device solves all of my problems. Listen, man. You know, it's his opinion. Whatever. If he thinks it's awesome, it's awesome. But you cannot. You That's cannot gross. say that this notch is a is a courageous radical design. It it's a band aid on something that they screwed up on. It was never the intention to have it's this terrible. thing on there. It's and a, you could say to yourself, "I'm okay with it." it. <laughs> You could yeah. say to yourself, I'm fine with this. Yeah. No, the rest but, of the device is beautiful. If the, It really is a beautiful looking device. I, uh, it's very attractive. But it's, it, courage? No. You and know what it is? It doesn't take courage <laughs> to say to yourself, oh, yeah. shit, we can't do what we wanted. What's the next best thing? Oh, this? Okay. To include the screen. Yeah, you know, courage is not adopting a, a screen aspect ratio or oh. technologies that others debuted years and years ago uh and then Guys, making it worse by extruding into the screen <laughs> app, the iphone <laughs> 10 has attracted former android users along with loyal apple customers yeah oh, some people want to people want something different but that doesn't mean that this design is i do you think this design is going to hold up the next three years i'm worried that it will because oh that's the way apple does things. no i mean i'm i'm worried that apple you know it's going to go on the, the ipad paul i'm telling you <laughs> I, yeah. Just, I mean, I, just to I know I'm, I'm, I'm legitimately worried about it. I, I, um, they, this is the way Apple circles the wagons. You know, they hear all the feedback, and instead of, although, you know, like I said, they've been apologizing a lot, but usually, it's like, oh, screw you, we're going to put this on everything. <laughs> you know, we're going to release three phones next year with a notch in it. You know, even, even though they already have the technology not to require the notch. So um, this is this is this person's comment. I'm actually absolutely speechless at this article. I had the iPhone 10 for two months due to the holiday return policy, and Face ID was was an absolute dumpster oh, fire. Face ID is the worst. Yeah, guys, yep. it, it, it's here's the thing. Sometimes, sometimes it's okay to say my team is bad. I'm used to it. I'm a Mets fan. I've suffered sure. my whole life as a Mets fan. I'm not it's in not... denial. <laughs> I'm not in denial. I don't walk around saying the Mets are the best team in baseball. I, I Everybody else it sucks. It doesn't have to be your, your team sucks. That's not actually it it doesn't have to be that extreme. All you have to do is just be honest. You know, if you want to use a sports metaphor or whatever, I grew up in Boston in the 1980s. I hated the Yankees, I hated the Lakers, but here's the thing. If you actually grow up and mature, what you can do is look at those teams that we competed against, so the Philadelphia 76ers who were amazing in the early 1980s, and you can see them for what they were, which is incredibly talented sports clubs that deserve your respect. And just choosing the partisan angle over what is true, 
Yeah, no. And this what is, is honest Paul, is ridiculous. You know, this and is, I, I, it's immature. I, and this has become a frustrating point for me. And, and I know we could wrap it up. But we're running out of time. But yeah, I, I think we're, as someone that covers technology and, I, and gets yeah. paid for it, both of us, right? Both of us get paid. I, I have no sure. idea how. Listen, I not always much, say I'm, yes. a, I'm an enthusiast. I'm not an expert. I never claim to be an expert. I love technology. I love mm -hmm. talking about it. And I love hearing other people's opinions. And I love being told, Andrew, you're wrong. And this is why. And I love to challenge myself with this stuff. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm always constantly about personal growth. But when I, go okay. to, when I go to these, when I go to a tech website that I followed I for know. years, and yep. now I'm getting just bias articles about politics or products or personal yep. pieces about how you feel, you know, it, it's the message has gotten lost. And this really comes down to people wanting to get as much as much posts as possible and oh, as yeah, many no, clipping listen, headlines as possible to make ad that revenue. That article is genius. He's going to get all kinds of page of views course, because people who hate course. this are going to flock listen, to it. I'm talking about it right now. Yeah. By the way, I Office know. 2019 will only be on Windows 10. Yep. I've written about it. I just saw it right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm very much behind. So what does this mean for the Mac? It doesn't mean anything for the Mac. The Mac will have Office 2019 as well. Okay. It means only among Windows versions. Yeah. Okay. I can see that. But by Windows 8. Windows 7 too, Windows by the 7. way. Um, we just updated all the machines in my office. And let me tell you, we upgraded from Windows 8. <sighs> it's been a joyous time for me. You don't see a lot of Windows 8 in, out in the world. No, you know? no. We, we, you know it's what it was? The new, the new Vista. Yeah, I guess so. All right, Paul, let's wrap it up. Uh, Tuesdays, we're, we're planning on moving back to Tuesday, so we have some more time, Paul and I. <laughs> uh, okay. Because, uh, you know, Thursdays are a little tight. I know it's very stressful for Paul. It's very stressful for me. Yeah. I miss our yes. times. I miss our drinking shows. Sure. I miss Paul yelling at me for two hours or an hour and a half or an hour 15. You know, I kind of I kind of feel like we're, we're on a tight schedule here, and it's... Yep cramping me so we're, we're planning on tuesdays paul and i have a meeting next week we have a couple of things coming up maybe not next week the following week i think we'll have a meeting we'll talk uh but a lot of a lot of cool stuff guys and i and i'm glad you guys are sticking with us for all these years and still <laughs> listening to us talk about this and i love your feedback always uh paul also loves it tell paul he's also him. courage yes. Courage. It takes courage to do a show like this. It takes this. courage. For, for so many years. For the amount of yeah. money. I mean, some people could mail it in, but it takes courage. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it takes courage. <laughs> to get it this right. Go to our website, gfknetwork.com. Subscribe to the podcast. Everything Paul. Go to therot.com. Subscribe to Therot Premium. I want to thank Casper for supporting the show. Casper.com slash Andrew. Get $50 off your mattress purchase. And we will see you all next week. Take care.